Hi everybody, I'm Jerry Port and I'm an indie author and this is the first video of April. Today I'm going to be talking about dealing with criticism because one thing is for sure, writing is a critical career. You will get critics and they will always be there and there is no getting away from it, it's part of the job. So one thing I'm asked is how do I deal with it? How do I deal with bad reviews, bad feedback and most importantly, how do I decompress once I've got that bad feedback and bad reviews because it's really easy to go to a place where you feel like you can't keep writing because you've had such bad criticism. So I'm going to take you through some of the steps that I use to deal with criticism. Number one, dealing with criticism itself. Make sure you stay grounded, whether that's by having a friend, friends and support systems around you that you trust whether that's by taking some time away, whether that's by analysing the criticism and determining whether it's valid. Um, however you work to stay grounded with criticism and process it, that's, that, that's what you need to be doing. Part of that is acknowledging that you have been criticised and moving past it and that can be using any of the above, like I said, a friend's support system, or taking time away, or dissecting it and deciding whether or not it's valid. And if you can't acknowledge it, and you can't move past it, then you need to take some time to process it, which is something I'll cover when I talk about how I decompress. Number two, how do I deal with bad reviews? I remember that the reviews are for the reader, and that no one can get perfect reviews from every single person who reads their book. It's just not possible. Go to JK Rowling's page and read Harry Potter reviews and I guarantee you will find a lot of one star, two star reviews and that's just the way it goes. That That's the job we're doing, that's the world we're in. Writing brings about criticism and it's just part of the job. If you can't deal with reading reviews then sometimes the best thing to do is just not read them. There's no reason to read reviews. I mean, some people say that um, they can be a good way to learn what people like and don't like, but you can also be learning that with good beaters and in other areas with a critique partner and with feedback from your beta readers and from other people that you trust. That said, sometimes reading reviews is a good idea for you personally, and that's fine. I do read my reviews and I'm okay with bad reviews and I've dealt with bad reviews and I deal with them basically privately. One thing I was learned very early on is that you do not under any circumstances engage the reviewer, even if it's a positive review because the reviews are there for the reader, they're not there for the author to sit there and go, yes, but why did you feel like that? That just kind of is creepy. So yes, reviews can be something you can learn, but they should not be the only place you're learning and they should only be something you use if you can cope with hearing the bad stuff. Number three, bad feedback. If this is during your beta round, then you need to remember that it's for the better of your work. The, the feedback you're given is because they're wanting to help you bring about a book that is the best it can be. And you can ask yourself, and if need be a friend, if the feedback is valid. Like if they've said that you use too much purple prose, you can say, you know, well, do I use too much purple prose? And if I do use too much purple prose, how much is too much? And how many? So you see where I'm going with this. You can dissect it and you can talk to a friend or yourself and you can work out whether it's valid feedback or whether it's not. And if it is valid feedback, then you have to remind yourself it's a good thing. It's a good thing that it's been caught at this stage. If it's not valid feedback, then you have to be able to brush past it by, if it's just criticism for the sake of criticism with nothing, no basis for it, then you need to ask yourself whether or not that beta or that person who's giving the feedback is someone whose opinion you value. But you've got to remember that if you don't like the feedback, that doesn't mean that it's not valid. It, it doesn't mean that just because you don't like it that it's not true. That's not how it works and that's not what I'm saying. Because they're, they're, they're trying, especially if it's in, in a beta round, they're trying to make your book the best that they can, they can, it can be. And if the feedback they give to you is not glowing, that doesn't mean that it's not right. It means that they're saying to you, hey, there's a problem with this bit and this is why I feel like this. 
Having said that, generally I find that if one beta is saying that this area needs work and none of the others are, then there's a red flag there. But having, also having said that, if one of them says this and all the other beaters are saying the same thing, then you've got a problem. You've got a big problem. If you need to take some time to process the bad feedback or how you deal with the criticism itself and however you do that, like reading a book, talking to a friend or just having some chill out time, that works. But the process you should remember is the fact that just because it, it's bad doesn't mean that it's wrong. So, how do you decompress? Personally, I chat with friends and deal with it that way, but that doesn't mean it's going to work for you. There are loads of ways to decompress and to relax and that really just does depend on what you personally view as relaxing. I know some people who find it relaxing to go for a five mile hike. Personally, that's not going to work for me, but um, if it works for them, go for it. Um, you, I mean, to sum off the top of my head, you can take a bubble bath, you can watch a movie, you can read a book, or you can mean to read. So whatever it takes for you to decompress and like to process and move past that criticism and deal with it. Because this isn't about just shoving it, just processing it and shoving it away somewhere and hoping nobody notices. It's about dealing with the criticism because you can't keep going and not deal with the criticism. Whether you decide it's valid criticism and therefore if it's from B2B you should do some rewriting, you have to move past it to be able to do that writing. Whether you decide that it's not valid and it's a bad review and it's one you don't like, well there's nothing you can do about it, so you're just going to have to get used to it being there and process it, accept it and move on. One thing you need to always remember is that it's part of the job. It's just, much that sucks, part of the job. Learning to deal with it is better than letting it impact and affect what you write and how you are online. Getting a thicker skin is a must, but it's not always possible and it takes time to do what you need to do offline and in private to bring the right face online and in public. One thing I've learned as an author is the fact that being online, you are your professional persona and therefore you need to be able to present that persona no matter what kind of stuff is thrown at you. So yeah, it sucks, but it's the job you've chosen and it's the career you've chosen or has chosen you. and. It's, it's not just limited to writers, it's, it's basically any kind of artistic or creative pursuit will have criticism. I mean, most jobs will have criticism. Writing and creative pursuits usually have it more because they involve creating original content. But it's, it sucks and everyone hates it and nobody's just enjoying it. It's just part of the job and you've just got to work with it and you've just got to have to move past it and not let it affect the work you produce. So that's all I've got time for today. If you want to leave a comment, you can do so down below. If you want to get in touch with me, you can do so on Facebook, on Goodreads, on Tumblr, on Twitter. You can buy my books on Amazon in paperback and e-format. And you can pre-order The Dying Folds for the Secret, which is due out on May 15th. And don't forget to check out the Darkest Side of Fiction 2017 event, where I will be signing books in October, all the links for which are listed below. And thanks for watching. Bye.